1170 WCLN 1170 Radio and Cable Channel 16 are pleased to present We Should Know, hosted by J.W. Simmons, an upbeat, informative look at people, places, and issues facing our community. This education-based analysis of issues will remain positive and informative as we consider closely what we should know. Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen. J.W. Simmons, your host for We Should Know. We're coming to you from Clinton, North Carolina, Star Communications Channel 16, WCLN Radio. Tuesdays and Thursdays, 2.30 on Tuesdays, replays at 7 p.m. Tuesday and Thursday. And what are we doing today? We're talking trash. And we're talking trash with the county man, count, assistant county manager, Susan, I've always wanted to call you the county manager. I mean, I guess that might be okay with Ed. I'm not sure, but I'm going to call you the assistant county manager and public information officer. Close to 30 years yes, with sir. Sampson County government. Very close. Um, you've seen a lot of things during that period of time, I'm sure, which we might get in a few of those in a few minutes. We also have with us Corey Hare, who is since April has been in Sampson County as the supervisor for environmental kinds of waste stuff. And I want to thank you for being here. Thank you. thank you for your service in Bladen County. You spent about 15 years down there with public health as well, unrelated position. Thank you for being here, Corey. And a gentleman that has been ladled with a heavy weight of about 13 counties, and the organization he is with is called GFL. And uh, I want to just uh, say Lance Edwards as operation manager uh, Lance, you probably have more impact on people's lives than they can ever imagine, and many of them haven't met you because you deal with the waste and process of waste from their kitchen to their homes to their offices that ultimately ends up in some landfill somewhere in the area that you have responsibility for. Is that safe to say? Absolutely. And. This GFL is a huge environmental industry that is not only just covers North Carolina, not only the United States, but the whole North American continent uh, out of Toronto, Canada. So um, a multi-million dollar industry. Sometimes, I didn't, you know, we started out, Susan, years ago with waste industries. Or BFI. Actually. Yeah, and it's like now all of a sudden, wow, look, look what we stepped into. So I want to open today with Susan. Susan, on the scale of things that you look at daily as assistant county manager and, and public information officer, what is where does the waste piece of this? Is that something that is crucial? Is it something that you kind of watch that that is a key part of the vitality of communities? Kind of tell us from your perspective as a manager in local government. Well, I, I, what I think, how I think I would answer that is. Um, of all the economic and environmental uh, issues that we grapple with, the efficient management of solid waste probably is the most economically diff difficult and probably has the most public concern. I mean, obviously, we have to have an efficient and economical way for our citizens to dispose of their refuge. Um, we've been able to handle that. We've been able to do that efficiently, I think, because we've been very judicious in how we chose our partners in doing that. GFL being one of those, and before GFL, Browning Fairs Industries and Waste Industries. And then we have contracts with other entities, uh, entities which manage our uh, electronic waste, ent entities which manage our scrap tires. I mean, we've been very judicious in choosing partners that had the technical expertise to do it and are environmentally sound stewards. I mean, we expect them to have um, an understanding of our desire to ensure that this is done in the most environmentally sound way. So, big challenge. Corey, I'm, I'm gonna just kind of go right down the, <clears throat> the list here, or right up the list, should I say. Corey, you're new to, to Sampson County. You've, you've obviously had experience in in Bladen, which we got a, a huge listing audience down there. A lot of our folks in Bladen County, we have to salute uh, constantly, and, and we do that because rural areas have a unique kind of perspective on waste uh, because we usually, historically, we've always kind of looked after it. We're way beyond that. Since you've been here so far, just kind of give us a sense of some things that you've seen, uh, your perspective kind of from kind of outside walking in, so to speak. 
Well, I didn't, you know, like you said, I didn't have any much dealings with the solid waste side of mm -hmm. environmental health in Bladen. But since I've been here, um, I've tried to immerse myself to figure out what my role would be with the scrap tire program, the electronic program, and and figuring out what my department can do to to make sure that the the convenience sites are run well and, and serve the the population and the people of Sampson County to the best of their ability. Mm -hmm. uh, but I, you know, we had convenience sites in Blade, and, and it just makes it a whole lot easier for companies like GFL to be able to separate and the the, the um, garbage and the trash that comes in, whether it's recyclable or um, brown goods, appliance, stuff like that. So, but just seeing that how these are run here by G the GFL company are, is um, been enlightening and as far as watching something that's been run very well and um, organized for the people of Sampson as far as making it convenient for them. Lance, I'm, I'm going to move to you, and, and it's not necessarily going to be in order, so we're going to get all uh, going in different directions here in a minute, but I want to kind of just kind of get everybody kind of locked in where we're at. Uh, and we're talking Green for Life, GFL. Yes, and and when, you, when I hear that, it builds into the huge kind of global thing that's going on now with lowering carbon and uh, the green movement, uh, no carbon vehicles anymore and electric and all this kind of thing. The seat that you're in, and literally I plan to kind of move it this way, it's like I'm hearing expectations and you're the guy with 13 counties and all these convenience sites, landfill sites, ultimately do you feel comfortable in fulfilling those expectations absolutely yeah um since we i was originally with waste industries um we merged with gfl as you alluded to they're out of canada um it's one of the largest waste consolidation companies in the world um since i transitioned to gfl i mean all the things that they've implemented has just been absolutely fantastic with the way they want to consolidate waste recycle cardboard as you leading to the, as far as the white goods, scrap metal, the way we process the waste. I mean, it's um, it's basically a game changer since they became in the picture um, for me to work for this company. It's been really a blessing. Now, literally anything that goes on in the county, is Corey, you or, or, or Susan or anybody that works county government, if you have a certain product or, or certain things that need to be processed, we've seen trucks that go around and shred paper. We've seen trucks that go around and pick up uh, anything from old paint and rolling around. The, the question is, and this is for any, any, either one of you, is does eventually everything end up in a landfill somewhere? The answer to that for us would be no, because obviously, for instance, the landfill itself can't even accept certain items. Right. Uh, they can't accept tires, aluminum, um, Lance could probably tell others, I mean, and for, for multitude of reasons. One, because the items aren't safe in a landfill. Mm -hmm. You know, you, obviously we can't take hazardous waste. Um, the landfill permit itself only allows certain things to go into our landfill. And I would imagine that there, any landfill anywhere else would have the same specifications. Um, those, those are by state permit. Plus, as I said, it's just they're simply, they're items which are not safe to be disposed of. Lance, what do you see showing up at your landfills that sometimes you have to just say, what were people thinking? Um, as Susan, Susan was basically saying, sometimes the, the public is not, you know, informed enough to know these things, but like um, electronics and stuff like that, that's supposed to be disposed of in a different manner, hazardous materials. Um, we also at Sampson County Landfield, we do asbestos, sludge, stuff like that, but those tickets kind of have to be manifested and be within state laws based mm -hmm. on what they accept for their permit at each of these disposal facilities. As um, far as like the recycling cardboard, stuff like that, we try to sort that stuff and at our transfer stations, and those are taken to like um, a Sunoco, which is one of the largest recycling facilities pretty much in North America. And they sort the stuff out to cardboards, um, basically recycles, commingle recycles and stuff. So it can be repurposed and reused, kind of just to lower the carbon footprint and stuff like that. Do you expect, I mean, I guess by design, are the landfills designed to be biodegradable in the sense that everything that goes in there should be 
stuff that will eventually dissolve and kind of go back to nature? Is that? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. They build um, at the landfill, um, Joseph Smith, he, uh, he runs Saps County Disposal. He also works for GFL. Um, but yeah, we build different grids at the landfill and they're covered up based on how much trash they can hold. And basically it's all based on how many years it takes to dispose of this waste and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. Susan, when you think about the county though, from, from your position as assistant mm -hmm. county manager, is, is this something you're constantly looking at to make sure that, that we're partnered with folks like mm -hmm. GFL, that we're partnered with people that can has the capacity to deal with it? And how does it affect other counties? When you're talking to folks that do similar things that you do in Sampson, do they have different concerns or are they pretty much the same concern? Well, first of all, not all counties are fortunate to have a regional landfill. So they, for a lot of counties, they ship out their waste. Mm -hmm. So that yeah. makes Sampson County different in that um, area. Um, I think all counties um, are very mindful of having a partner such as GFL that will follow the state rules. We obviously don't want any, any hazardous waste in our um, landfills. The landfill itself has um, protections. If you go over the scale, you're being checked. We have taken uh, the initiative to have different partners that we know specialize, specialize in difficult waste, scrap tires, uh, electronics. They, they are the, the person who had the technical knowledge with those specific mm -hmm. wastes. So that, that kind of helps uh, not only Lance, but Corey as well, in mm -hmm. the sense if he's out there and has supervising that area and he sees some things, he could say, look, you might need to consider taking mm -hmm. it here or you might want to take it there. Right. Is it important for folks to call in sometimes? And, I, and I'm going to kind of use this as a lead in uh, to our next segment because we're mm -hmm. fixing to take a break. But uh, let's think about this. Uh, what do we want people to pick that phone up and maybe call Corey's office or call Lance? Obviously, you don't want everybody calling you. I know that. <laughs> But to say, look, I got this. And when we come back, let's talk about that. What sure. do we want to know from them? Ladies and gentlemen, we'll be back in a moment. We're talking trash today. And we got the people here that know all about that. Call a friend. Stay tuned. We'll be back in a moment. Experiencing slow internet? If you have a fast internet package, the problem is most likely your wireless router. With more devices using Wi-Fi, your wireless router may not be able to deliver the speed and coverage you need. We now have the leading solution to enhance your internet experience. Using small devices in a mesh network, these Wi-Fi appliances cover just about any size home so that all your devices can operate to their fullest potential. Whole home Wi-Fi from Star Communications. Get the most out of your internet connection. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back. We're talking with Dave today with Lance Edwards, Operation Manager for GFL Environmental. We're also talking with um, the Susan Holder. And Susan, uh, again, thank you for being here. I can't imagine what your schedule is like with everything that's going on <laughs> environmental, not just waste. Also, we're talking with Corey Hare, who supervises environmental processing stuff here in Sampson County. Um, when we went to break, we were talking about what folks need to kind of understand when, who, when and who do you call. Um, if you're not sure, what do you do? Those kinds of things. So let's kind of get back in that field a little bit. And, and uh, Lance, I'll start with you. There are things that you were mentioning in the first segment that oftentimes you don't particularly want folks to take to certain uh, convenience sites. Convenience sites, oftentimes you will find a container there, you'll find a GFL person there, and you, you'll have a bag of, of household trash. That's the kind of thing that goes in there. But if a person has something else in that bag of trash, that person might not know it. So if we're not sure, is there someone we can call? And do we call you or do we call Corey? Oh, absolutely. I mean, um, they could easily call me or they can also call the landfill, we'd talk with Joe. Um, we have several people. We have a group of CSRs, customer service representatives, that can tell anybody that calls within Sampson County or in the state for that matter um, of acceptable items that are disposed at our public sites, which are the convenience sites. We have 12 here in Sampson County for the residents, um, but they could call. And if they got questions about acceptable items, recyclable items, what can be considered scrap, um, e-waste, which is electronics. Um, we also have two sites here in the county that um, provide electronic waste. Um, but scrap metal, we have two sites also that take scrap metal. And there's also items in that that's not acceptable if they have any kind of questions, they can reach out to GFL Environmental. They can look up on our website. At all of our convenience sites, we have signs up 
of lists of acceptable items that can be thrown away, whether they're recycled, trash, cardboard, and um, electronic waste. Corey, I'm going to switch to you, and I'm going to take that to another level here. Um, we are in and have been and continue to grow in a culturally diverse community. And we have a lot of folks that have moved in to Sampson and, and Bladen counties and surrounding counties. And sometimes the culture and this country they come from uh, may not have these kind of structured ways of doing things. In fact, they may be like when I was growing up, you just put it in a pile in the woods somewhere. Unfortunately, we see a lot of this stuff beside the road. One of them is tires. Uh, I've, I've experienced that, and I live in the country, so I've experienced where you know, all of a sudden you see 50, 60 tires show up around a curve in a rural road, and you're going, what do I do? Who do I call? Is that who, do we call uh, Corey Hare? Is uh, that who we call? You would call the Environmental Health Office uh, to get some information. There is a form, I think, if I'm not mistaken, uh, County residents can take five tires for no charge. Mm -hmm. um, anything above that, you would need to come to our office. There's a form to fill out to take with you. GFL provides uh, a container to put those tires in at the landfill site. Um, but as far as the, if it's on the side of the road, I would think uh, give us a call and then we would reach out to um, the appropriate authorities to try to figure out maybe who put them there, how did we get them cleaned up, and get them to the landfill so it doesn't create an issue because tires laying around are, are issue multiple ways. Mm -hmm. they, they, they're the prime breeding ground of uh, mosquitoes. So they Absolutely. cause mosquito problems for people. Plus, um, people don't realize that they are very recyclable as far as using, being chipped up and used for fuel, for um, playground media, and also right. uh, in, um, for septic system drain lines as a replacement for rock. So tires can be very recyclable and also they can, you know, going back to the manufacturer, be retreaded. Re and one of the things that, that comes up oftentimes as well, it seems like there's been this increase and, and folks mm -hmm. talk to me and I know you guys have heard it, all three of you, is that you go down the road and all of a sudden you look and you're, you, you have to kind of slow down and just think, did I just see that? you'll see uh, a mattress or you'll see a piece of furniture just sitting beside the road and you yeah. think somebody that must have fell off, but it didn't. You, you, you know, you go back the next day, it's still there. You go by the next day, it's still there. Is that something you've seen increase? And I'll ask that for either one of you. Are you seeing that kind of thing increase in the area? Well, I could kind of say something to the, to the residents of Sampson County. If they have any mattresses or furniture, we actually provide a uh, mattress can specifically at our Snow Hill site, which is located in Roseboro, right there at the landfill, to dispose of mattresses and things of that nature. We also have a pre-crusher there, which is basically a compaction unit, but it's more for bulky items, mm -hmm. um, stuff that you know you really couldn't throw in your solid waste in your residential cart or into a compactor as far as with your municipal trash, which is your solid waste stuff. But uh, we also offer that for furniture, dressers, uh, things of that nature that they have at their house, which we really consider from our standpoint as bulk items. And then we also provide the mattress can specifically for mattresses and it's located at the Snow Hill side again. The bottom line mm -hmm. is littering is illegal. Um, and, and that's the county's position on it. I mean, that that's illegal activity. And if you see someone doing it, um, you should report it. Um, obviously you can, you can report it to environmental health and they'll contact um, the appropriate people, but people should also call the sheriff's department. They mm -hmm. investigate those. They will actually go to a, where someone has dumped the materials along the side of the road, see if there's anything on it that has an address or a name, and they will investigate. I can't tell you that it always comes to fruition that they're able to charge the person because there's not always a name or an identifying element to it. But the bottom line is littering is illegal. Um, and, and quite frankly, frustrating for the county because we've taken great effort to locate convenient sites. They should be convenient. Mm -hmm. There are 12 of them that sure. GFL under contract uh, manages for us. And I would say anyone in the county is probably no more, no more than 20 minutes from a convenient site. So yeah, quite frankly, it's frustrating that people are um, that thoughtless or lazy that they can't take it to something that their tax dollars are paying for. Mm -hmm.
And and Corey, I think that's one of the things I'm I'm keep looking at your job description and and thinking here when th this is a this is a huge job that you've decided to undertake in in trying to funnel this stuff and be kind of the point person. I guess I'm saying that correct, Susan. The point person for environmental issues. So you got to network very closely with uh, Lance to make sure that what you're saying connects with what they're doing. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I don't want to tell somebody wrong, and then they end up throwing something in the in a convenience site or to the um, landfill that doesn't belong there. Uh, trying to make sure that they understand what goes where is mm -hmm. critical. Do, do you guys think that oftentimes that folks do these, I'll call them inappropriate disposals of items, simply because of the cost thing? They don't want to go to Snow Hill or they don't want to go to Spivey's Corner with technology stuff. So they say, well, heck, there's nobody lives on this stretch here for about two miles. Slow down, boom, and out the back of the truck and keep driving. Do you think that's, is it that simple or is, or is it they just simply don't know? Well, I mean, from a cost standpoint, it's it's free to any resident mm -hmm. within Sampson County to dump at any of these 12 sites. And as, as Susan was kind of getting at is, they shouldn't be, they're strategically located, so there shouldn't be maybe within 20 miles of all the residents, mm -hmm. the way they're located throughout the county. Um, I don't know, I think, you know, sometimes, you know, the public takes it amongst themselves, and like you said, they find a county road or a turnaround or a spot off in the corner off a back road and dump their trash out. But uh, it's kind of why I wanted to come in and kind of inform them of that we have these locations that are free to the residents of the county that mm -hmm. they can use to dispose of trash, um, bulk items, uh, mattresses. We offer a multitude of things and work closely with Corey and Susan with the county to give these sites and the residents a place to dump it free of charge. It's the taxpayers' dollars that's paying for these sites to be ran. We're just contracted through the county to provide the service of correct and proper disposal. Corey, you come from Bladen County. Is Bladen pretty much the same setup as far as convenient sites and the availability of, of removal? Yeah, they're, um, they, they're, our, the trash from uh, Bladen is, all, is hauled to Sampson. Mm -hmm. um, but we there are 10 or 12 convenient sites there um, I'm not sure if GFL, y'all run those? No, sir. Okay. I, they're, they're then maintained by the county as far as I know. Yeah. And, um, but I was, I'm also a resident of Bladen County, too. Yes. But, they're, but they're set up with the different dumpsters for containers for the different um, listings of, of garbage. And so, but the problem persists in, I think, all counties because you'll find places where mattresses are just dumped in the side of the road, or you might find somewhere at the end of a dead end road, somebody's created their own dump site. Um, and that's very unsightly and, and people don't realize the the problems they can cause with, with that trash being there, not just to people, but the rest of the environment. And I don't think people realize how impactful that unsightliness becomes. If you think bigger picture, for instance, you know, we're expending a lot of money and effort to encourage businesses and industry to locate in Sampson County. And in order to do that, you've got to have a county that's perceived as having a quality of life and uh, an attractiveness about it. So if we don't monitor, maintain, and provide for a convenient disposal of waste goods, people are much more likely to dump the materials beside of the road. And that's not what we want. We won't want our county to look like that for potential business, for potential industry, for potential visitors who spend money in our county. I mean, that that becomes part of the equation of why we expend what we expend to make sure that we can, again, economically handle and safely handle uh, waste, uh, refuge, residential garbage. Corey, just a, a quick question. It, it appears the observation would be that that it's short-term thinking to start your own local landfill and uh, it has a long-term impact, uh, not only on the mm -hmm. county budget, but on the local community budget. Uh, when we come back from this break, I'd like to kind of expand in that field of uh, acquisition of trash and not only the convenience sites, mm -hmm. but if there's large amounts, container sites that can come to you. Ladies and gentlemen, we'll be back in a moment. We're talking trash today, talking with people that know about it, 
can do something about it. Stay tuned. We'll be back in a moment. At Home or Away, knowing who is at your door is priceless. Star Communications is here to help with its doorbell security camera by Skybell. Live viewing and two-way audio equips you with the ability to always see and greet anyone that shows up at your door. If this is the kind of confidence you are looking for, call Star Communications today at 1-800-706-6538 to learn more about this intelligent security that you can always depend on. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back. We should know it's on the air. I'm your host, J.W. Simmons. We're talking trash today, and we're talking with Susan Holder, the Assistant County Manager and Public Information Officer. We're talking with Corey Hare, who is the Sampson County Environmental Health Supervisor. Uh, started in April, Corey, here in Sampson, came to us from Bladen. Also, uh, we're talking with Lance Edwards, who is Operations Manager for GFL, and that's Green for Life. I'm trying to make myself say that so I just don't get caught up with that acronym, you know, how we always end up doing those things. But we're talking today, and we've gone through a lot of stuff. We kind of reached that point that I want to dig in more into that area of the kinds of things, Susan, that people, something mm -hmm. you mentioned on break, it was, I think, critically important. We think oftentimes that, oh, it costs too much, but um, it, depending on what's going on and who's using it, um, we've got a great opportunity with Lance's uh, organization that folks can get a container site if they're mm -hmm. cleaning a building out or if they're doing whatever, remodeling, <clears throat> but, but there are some constraints with that. Um, I'll let you and Lance talk about that okay. process. I mean, I, I think probably on the very foundational level, it's important to remember that the reason we have a regional landfill here in Sampson County is it solved a number of problems for our citizens. When we cited the landfill, there was a push for new Subtitle D regulations that you had to have a land landfill, a, a land landfill, and. Um, we worked with Browning Ferris Industry, who then became Waste Industries and now GFL, to have a site that was safe and secure um, to enable people to take certain things. And that landfill will accept everything, residential waste, commercial waste, refuge, ash, sludge, uh, construction and demolition debris, which people often have, as you say, when they're renovating a house or mm -hmm. demolishing a chimney uh, or something like that, those things can be disposed of in our landfill. We have a site for that. And residential waste is free as part of us siting that regional landfill. So for those persons who are doing and have those larger items, have you know everyday residential trash, but more important and more difficult for people, those bulky items, green waste, the landfill will take it and it's free residential waste. I'm sure Lance will discuss the containers that he can provide yeah. Um, to, to allow people to do it from their home. But the bottom line is, once it goes across the scale, if you're a Sampson County citizen, it is free. And everybody, Lance, likes that four-letter word free. That's one thing that you really get people's attention. So where does that stop? So um, and, and hypothetically, we could say a person, as Susan pointed out, may be doing a remodeling job and they're a resident. They put that in their mm -hmm. trailer or vehicle. They take it, it might still be weighed, but it doesn't cost me anything. Correct. So that person says, well, I need a container. I don't really have a, uh, a way to haul it off. Do you have containers available for them? And yes. let's talk about the cost of that. Um, yes, sir. We have, um, we provide also residential service, which is your like local, what you see the 95 gallon carts that you would see roll side road. You put your municipal garbage in just to trash out of your household trash. We also offer, offer front load dumpsters, which are the bigger dumpsters you would see behind maybe a restaurant that's inside of a corral and stuff like that. We also, more rural places, we offer these as well. Some people want this kind of service and um, we do provide it. If they're doing big construction jobs, total remodels or something of that nature, we provide roll off cans, which is kind of what you would see at a convenient site. It's a, basically an open top dumpster, it holds 30 yards of waste. Um, and we also provide that service too as well for anybody within the county. Um, there is a cost to that because we're having to haul it and we're having to dispose of it too. But um, it's it basically the cost of that, the haul rate, the disposal would be basically a flat rate. Um, the cost of the haul would be dependent on how far it is, the distance from the landfill, because you know the truck's gotta make a certain amount of money. So it's kind of a mileage thing. Exactly. So the haul rate would be based on that, but it's very competitive rates. And um, like I said, we do offer that service 
some some key some residents they have the front load dumpsters at their house rather than a 96 gallon so basically if they got a lot of trash and they don't want to take it to the convenience sites or they don't want to take it to the landfill we'll have we'll send trucks on there on a route and they'll dump these cans and they can size from two yard to an eight yard container and they hold quite a bit of trash so i think what we're talking about here is is what susan pointed out um, and and you confirm and then we're talking about those folks that for whatever reason not that I would know anything about this, but over years you accumulate a lot of stuff and you need to just get rid of it. And you've had two or three yard sales and you donated everything to the church and all of a sudden you discover, well, good gracious, there's another train car load. You can also take care of that, but it might Correct. cost several hundred dollars to get that thing out there. And, Correct. And you just toss it in it or open the door and push it in there, <laughs> close it and then say, okay, I've cleaned it out. Correct. And, and it still it's based on mileage and actual cost of rather than mm -hmm. tonnage profitability right correct yeah it's based on how much the can would weigh the tonnage of the can which is the disposal cost and then like you said based on mileage and time it would take to haul the can to and from the landfill would uh, be the cost of the haul rate and i, I think mm -hmm. susan when i look at the fin the financial piece of that oftentimes these folks will sit down and kind of think through that even if they have to spend several hundred dollars to get it out mm -hmm. there and, and just load it it saves them time mm -hmm. and plus it saves whatever kind of equipment or or hiring somebody else to, you know put it in a farm trailer and mm -hmm. and hopefully you know Corey, part of it won't fall outside the road trying to get it over there so you solve a lot of problems uh, obviously i mean I, there are uh, the the thing that i think we i hear is all three of us saying is there are options and the county's worked very hard to make sure the citizens had options for disposal. I mean, obviously the easy one is to put it in your pickup truck if mm -hmm. you have it and drive it to the landfill or take it to a convenience site. And again, we, tr we focus on the convenience side of that. Mm -hmm. But again, GFL, again, we're partnering with people who had the expertise and the technology um, experience to bring citizens options for how they dispose of their trash. Now, obviously in a rural area, rural county, curbside waste is not there unlike a city where obviously people have mm -hmm. every day or weekly pickups of their mm -hmm. trash but the trade-off is for us providing the convenience sites and again it it it's it's an option for people now, now correct me i think there are a few places there there's some private industry folks that have stepped up and started supplying weekly home pickup in certain areas of the county did i am i correct on that um, well, we we do provide. We have what's basically called um, throughout the county. We do the town of town of Turkey. We do Roseboro, Salemburg. Um, but we also, if if a resident that's outside of the city of Clinton, basically in a town or a rural area, we do have subscription services. Mm -hmm. If they want to get a, a trash cart that you would see that you roll outside the road for curbside service. We do offer that as well at GFM. And that would be like a monthly fee or something? Yes, yeah, just a monthly rate. Um, basically, it would be once a week trash pickup, once a week recycle, and then it would be at a standardized monthly rate. So, you know, Susan and Corey, it was kind of, mm -hmm. this is more toward you. It just seems to me that the county and rural folks, whether wherever you live, I'm sure Bladen's probably the same way, uh, we're, we're becoming more and more uh, urbanized to an extent. And I'm, I'm seeing that in the sense of county water. Mm -hmm. uh, Lance just pointed out, you know, you can have your trash picked up if you want to, they'll take care of it. Uh, either way, whether you live in a city or rural area, trash pickup costs you, somebody's paying the bill. Mm -hmm. It might be yeah. wrapped in another package bill, but somebody's paying for that. Do you see that continuing to expand? The expectation of trash pickup, that is. Uh, Personally, I think I, I, don't, I, mean, I can't speak for Lance and his company, but in Bladen, I know there is a private company that offers it mm -hmm. to to um, individuals out in the, the rural area. Um, I would think as our generation gets more and more inundated with trash, with the way things are going, with ordering things and, and, and products mm -hmm. coming to your house, delivered directly to your house, that trash is just going to become more and more an issue and the idea of pickup at your house will become more popular mm -hmm. and you may see more um, individual companies getting into that. Do, does some of this, guys, as we're talking about this, is, does it build into that kind of mental dynamic that 
we're and, I, and again, I'm, I'm looking at my generation of people. Sometimes what our expectations is, is not really so far, but there, there is a group coming behind us in this generational movement that have very high expectations. So it's that pickup, that thing, that service thing, Susan, that that expectation's there. And you alluded to industry and business mm -hmm. and growth. We got to step up to be, be able to meet that need. Am I correct in thinking that way? Well, and it's, it's always a balance. You know, years ago, before we had a regional landfill, the county did have convenience sites. They, weren't, they were operated by county staff, mm -hmm. which was very expensive. Mm -hmm. So for us, it was much more advantageous for the county budgetarily to, have a, to pay a contract to have a company do it instead and us negotiate a rate for that to be done. Um, it's obviously with 962 square miles, curbside service for the whole county is not economically yeah, yeah. feasible for At the county. At the moment, right. Well, I don't know that it ever would be to, to do every single household in Sampson County for the county to do it. Mm -hmm. But we can, again, negotiate with and, and, and uh, contract with a company that can provide it at a reasonable cost. Yeah. For the taxpayers, and we keep we we must think of this as a cost to the taxpayers. We have to be mindful of that. Yeah, and, and Corey, to, to your point, uh, I am aware of some a private company that, that is doing that in the northern part of the county. That I was told uh, is, is doing that, and a lot of folks um, are jumping on board with. It. I was a little bit surprised, but I mean, and I'm not talking really high income people, mm -hmm. but they've jumped on board with it. You know, Lance, just because of literally again back to that word convenience. They don't have to worry about it. They push their uh, container out beside of the road and um, you know, it's, it's taken care of. So I, I think that's kind of where I want to kind of maybe go to conclusion with this segment before we start our next segment. But that last segment that we're having for this conversation, I want to I want folks to understand when we come back. I want to really get pull out of you. I want just you guys to just be totally honest and give us an idea of where we're headed problems that you would like the public's help with, things they can do that may seem, you know, minuscule, Corey, but is in the big picture, huge for people like Lance and others. So we'll be back in a moment. Ladies and gentlemen, stay tuned. We're talking trash coming up on the last segment. Very important information you're going to receive in that segment. Call a friend. Stay tuned. We'll be back in a moment. To get the most out of your electronic devices, you need a strong internet connection and a protected home Wi-Fi network. You need high-speed internet from Star. Star has the fastest, most affordable high-speed internet service available for all your devices. We have no long-term contracts or high-pressure sales. Our service speaks for itself, and switching is hassle-free. We take care of everything with free installation from a local company. High-speed internet from Star. Internet at the speed of life. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back. I'm J.W. Simmons, your host. The name of the show is We Should Know. We've been talking trash today. I want to remind you it's important that we hear from you, and you've done a great job with that. I want to remind you of the email address. It's we should know edu at gmail.com. We should know edu at gmail.com. Your comments about shows you'd like to see, about people you would like us to talk to, things you need to know more about comes from you and we bring the quote experts to you to talk to you about that. Also, if you'd like to drop us a card or a note, many people will give us a little letter occasionally, send it to post office box 1482 Clinton, North Carolina. If you happen to be not from around here, it might be Clinton, North Carolina, but either way it'll get to us and just address that to WSK or we should know. And thank you for those comments and we look forward to continuing to bring this show to you on a weekly basis. Today's show, we're talking trash and those people that are with us again is Corey uh, Hare and Corey, you're the environmental health supervisor. Wanted to introduce the last segment with you up front. And then of course, Lance, uh, Edwards with GFL, and that's Green for Life. And try to remember Green for Life because it builds into everything. And Susan uh, Holder, who is the Assistant County Manager and Public Information Officer. And Susan, I didn't go into a lot of your background, but you've got also additional training. Your academics, I thought, was right on point with a, a degree in English 
and psychology. Mm -hmm. Boy, is that psychology part come in uh, good for your for uh, leadership service. position for the county <laughs> county government, uh, plus a lot of credentials in uh, public management from the Institute of Government, uh, specialty training you've had with environmental uh, disasters and terrorism. Uh, of course, I've you and I've been at the same uh, pit a lot of times with hurricanes going on. As as I show up, I, I see you that. So thank you for your service. So as we get to this last segment, and we're again talking about waste and trash, let's help folks understand not only that free word, but things that we may have missed and we didn't touch on that you guys hear a lot, that you get impacted with a lot, that maybe you get the same phone call and ask the same question. Even if it's on the website, there you may get that call over and over again. So let's talk about some of those. And um, I'll start. Well, I'll start with with um, Lance. Uh, kind of give us yeah. some insight oh. from because you you have so many counties Correct. that you look at. Um, most of the, I'd say probably far as from a citizen or a resident perspective, most of the calls we get is what's acceptable materials to be dumped. Um, what's unacceptable. And like you were alluding to, if if you got pain or chemicals or oil or anything of that nature, what do I do with it? How do I get rid of it? And um, basically, GFL, we provide a service and we can get rid of all these kind of materials and process it based within state guidelines, whether it's at a disposal facility, a transfer station, or we also have actual tanks like um, me and Corey were talking about is that where they can rinse their oil out and it's basically back to a recyclable material. but that's one of the main questions that we get is touching on what's acceptable, what can I recycle, what's considered scrap, what's considered household garbage, um, and where to dispose of these things in the proper nature. So so what I hear you understanding, you can handle that, it, but it, it has to come to the landfill site, the convenience site. Is Does all convenience site have that ability to handle oil or whatever it may be, or chemicals, or is it just certain convenience sites? Well, certain convenience sites within Sampson County can handle, like um, we have two sites here that we work with the county with that do the electronic waste, uh -huh. which is like, you know, TVs, or microwave, stuff of that. We also have two sites within the county that we do scrap metal, white goods on um, those locations or on, I guess, Sampson County's website. Mm -hmm. um, but most of the other sites, we do cardboard, recycle, and just your household garbage at those sites. Our Snow Hill site, which is located at our landfill in Roseboro, it's a convenient site for the residents here. That's the one that takes pretty much every kind of material you got that's not hazardous. They take mattresses, furniture, um, municipal garbage, recycle, and if they have any other questions, they can go talk to Joe or Veronica Lee at the Sampson County Disposal Facility if they have any questions on hazardous material. Veronica Lee is our contact over there, and she deals with special waste. And some some of the hazardous materials I'm I'm hearing, uh, Corey, probably you would not want to advise folks to to do what is kind of a typical thing uh, is you have a big pile of limbs, Susan, and if it's liquid and it might burn, you just dump it up there, and you if it's fifty gallons or five gallons, and you just set fire to it, it that might be a problem, correct? Yes, I mean because when you uh, you think it might be burning up in that fire uh, is really leaching into the ground and can cause you problems, mm -hmm. you know, not necessarily right then, but down the road as it leaches on, it could get into the groundwater and cause you a problem with your drinking water. Because ultimately, even if you have county water and it's monitored and it's very, mm -hmm. very clean and well done, at the, the beginning of that ends up coming out of the ground. Yeah. I, I get somewhere, yes. right? It might be several thousand feet, but it's still coming out of the ground. The aquifer could be very. Yeah. Um, so when I, when I think about this, as we're kind of concluding with, with a lot of issues here, is there specific things that if somebody calls, and Susan, you've mentioned a couple of times looking at the websites and those kinds of things, but oftentimes, as you know, people like to talk to somebody and they like to talk to people on the phone. Uh, would you like them to call you, Corey, or, uh, or would you prefer? It, it just depends on, the. I would say, the question. If yeah, they, if they give want, us an idea. Yeah, like Lance was leading to, um, if they want to know what the landfill would say, it, I would I would say call the landfill or look on their website. Mm -hmm. um, a lot of calls we get in environmental health uh, is my neighbor's trash is building up. The the a resident maybe in the county is not taking advantage of all the convenience sites. Mm -hmm. So then we we have to go a different route and try to figure out how to 
motivate that that resident to get their their yard or whatever cleaned up and that's where we come in as far as figuring out the the proper authorities and people to talk to uh, but that's what um you know they can call our office look on the website um, but we were more than happy to try to help them any way we can as far as where they need to go um, and what is and isn't acceptable to, to be taken to the landfill. Last, well, I want to get a, a question too on this, this last part. I always get this call um, uh, and, and you know, people say, we well, need to talk, talk to somebody about waste. And, and Susan, one of, the, one of the key questions is, how many tons of trash goes into the Sampson County landfill per day? I can answer that. <laughs> yeah, that that's so simple. That's <laughs> yeah. so, 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 so simple. I answer that one. Uh, no, actually, again, I think I referenced this earlier, there is a facility permit for the landfill. Mm -hmm. And it, that landfill is permitted to accept 1,825,000 tons a year. Wow. That's what it's permitted for. We, can't, we cannot exceed that without adjusting our permit. And, and that's, that's what, a state permit. That, that, that is a state permit. So, um, and we do accept waste from all of North Carolina counties um, and because it is a regional landfill, mm -hmm. but the trade-off in that is we don't we did not have to close our landfill um, that existed adjacent to where the current landfill is. We did not have the county did not have to pay to close that landfill, which it, in 1992 was going to cost us upwards of two million dollars a year to both close and maintain. Um, uh, citizens get free waste, um, and it is safe, it's lined. So that's the trade-off um, there for that. Um, obviously, the other trade-off is the host fees that we receive. We budget $2.1 million in host fees to offset the cost of our other solid waste initiatives right. like our convenience mm -hmm. sites. And quite frankly, we've used that revenue over the years to fund our part of our Agri-Exposition Center to, to pay the, the debt on um, the courthouse uh, annex, if you'll remember when we did that project, to pay the debt of ambulances and cars and things like that. So there has been some great benefit to having that regional landfill there. So so one of the reasons I think that, uh, and this is something that was put to us, was that oftentimes you could go um, to the landfill real early in the morning and you would see 10, 15, 18 wheelers lined up. Correct. To, but as Susan said, they could come from anywhere in North Carolina. Now, d they did not come out from out of state, no. correct? No. They, Just they in from, North Carolina. They come from other transfer station disposal facilities within the state. So uh, those state. trucks coming in could be hauling from Charlotte or they could be hauling from wherever. Yeah, Bladen from County, wherever. Duplin County. Yep. And but typically, it, what what is the is, do you have an idea of what the average tonnage a, a day is? I'm not sure about average tonnage per day, but uh, normally a trailer load is about 20, 28 tons per pickup when they're leaving the disposal facility to go into the landfill. But um, Joseph Smith would know the actual numbers per day on the tonnage that they dump. It's probably around 5,000. Right? Yeah, I was going to say five to 6,000 tons per five day. Five to 6,000 tons? Tons per day. Okay. Mm -hmm. Which, which, it, and it is, ebbs and flows. I mean, yeah. there will there'll be a. It might not be that every day. It might not be that every day. Now, eighty five percent of that. It's important to know that eighty five percent of that is residential waste. Yep. Um, about eight percent of it would be um, special waste. It would be um, uh, maybe uh, municipal sludge municipal or something sludge like, that. like that. Um, about a percent percent of that is green waste. Uh, I would say three to five percent would be. Um, construction and demolition. Mm -hmm. So, eighty-five percent of that is just simply household residential waste. Does the count? Does the county uh, landfill site generate methane gas for any alternate purpose? Or um, we have methane gas flares. Um, at one point, uh, Waste Industries, uh, before it was GFL, actually tried to collect and generate electricity from that. But again, that ebbs and flows. How much methane is 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 created mm -hmm. in the dis in the destruction of waste? So, um, the ability to generate electricity may or may not be there given the tonnage. Yeah, and and that requires the time to mm -hmm. to build that up to be able to make that happen as well. Right. Correct. Right. So, so Lance, I'm gonna kind of give you about ten seconds here if there's additional things you want to add. Well, I was gonna say um, based on 
like what we've went over kind of today, just wanted to be informative to the residents of Sampson County, just let them know that we provide any kind of service, whether it be residential, commercial, uh, any kind of solid waste service. They also have the 12 convenient sites that are strategically located across the county. Um, as Ms. Holder and Corey were alluding to, that they have these options to get rid of their trash for free at these sites in this taxpayer's dollars. I want to thank each one of you for being here. We'll continue to talk trash anytime you want to. Ladies and gentlemen, thank you and may God bless. Thank you for tuning in to this week's episode of We Should Know with host J.W. Simmons. If you have a question, comment, or suggestion regarding this or any episode, please send your emails to we should know edu at gmail.com. And remember to tune in every Tuesday at 2.30 for another informative episode of We Should Know.